Right, so Hazel Run is on Linux now. And I'd like to keep it that way. So if you've been following along, you probably know that I have been setting up continuous integration for Hazel and just in general focusing on testing the engine, making sure that things work, which turns out is important. Who would have thought? So in the latest installment of this saga, I thought it was finally time to add continuous integration for Linux, just to make sure that we can continue to build Hazel successfully on Linux and then later expand that into actually running the engine and running tests and making sure things work. So first of all, the part of Hazel supporting Linux, this has been something that has actually been around for quite a while, all thanks to Emily. She came along and joined the team as a volunteer quite a while back, and I guess she's really into Linux and decided to make Hazel run on Linux. So definitely very thankful for that. But what supporting multiple platforms means, uh, you know, somewhat unfortunately, is that there's more work to do. There, there's, you can't just simply write code and expect things to work. In fact, I have to say that even just on a single platform like Windows, the fact that you have multiple configurations like debug, release, and dist, even just testing that, even just making sure that you've written some code, build it in debug, build it in release, build it in dist, even that is something that I feel like a lot of engineers just either forget to do or just don't want to do. And that's really the beauty of continuous integration. You know, we have continuous integration for Hazel using GitHub Actions. If you want to learn more about that, then I actually did talk about that quite in depth, showing how I set all of it up in a previous video, which I will have linked up there. So looking at the result of that, you know, we have like a commit going into dev and you can see that it's being built in debug, release and dist uh, successfully, you know, and we can actually look at all of the logs. You know, if it wasn't successful, for example, you could look at this and be like, this is what my wrong, this was the error, which means that, you know, I mean, I would still probably try and quickly compile my code in all of the configurations on Windows, you know, if I was writing code just to make sure that I didn't forget something that might affect a different build configuration. So like a classic example of that might be I've renamed a member variable and I've just been building in release, but there was an, an assert that used that old name of the member variable, which now means the debug is not going to build. So whilst I would still advocate for actually doing that building yourself manually before you commit, especially if you merge into dev. So maybe if it's in your own feature branch and you're planning to like clean stuff up anyway, you know, whatever. But once you're merging that into dev, which is like our mainline dev branch, by the way, instead of me explaining all the branches, if you just go to hazelengine.com slash roadmap, which is this Miller note board, there's a branches section that explains like all of our branches and how we use them. So this is the dev branch that I'm talking about. And you can see that everything else is getting merged into that. So this is already coming in handy. But anyway, if you do merge into dev, then yeah, you should probably test that anyway. But just in case you haven't, you will be caught by CI. So actually, I think this is where it literally happened because there was a commit that I did, but it broke the debug build and, you know, I fixed it and you can see the build now passes. So fantastic. But when you add an additional platform, which in turn will use a different compiler, you know, in our case at least. All of these Windows builds, they're being built by MS Build, which uses MSVC, which is the Microsoft like Visual Studio compiler. Linux, on the other hand, we are building using Clang, a different compiler. And I don't know if I really need to explain this. I guess it depends on your level of C++ experience, but even the same compiler between different versions can have drastically different results, including some things that will build on a certain version of the Visual Studio compiler, but will not build on other versions of the compiler. Like that happens all the time. So then if we move to a completely different compiler, of course there are gonna be differences and of course there are gonna be issues. Technically, if everyone wrote code that was 100% compliant with the C++ standard, then maybe you would have less problems because compilers do have bugs. So, you know, it's possible that you're perfect, but the compiler isn't. However, things do get complicated and definitely not anyone, I don't think, writes 100% compliant C++ code. That's just the reality of software development. And so there are lots of scenarios in which stuff does compile with MSVC, but does not compile with Clang. That happens a lot. And actually that's one of the reasons why Emily had to spend so much time getting Linux to build. Because building Hazel, because building Hazel on Linux exposed quite a lot of stuff that was that worked with MSVC, but did not work with Clang. And that code had to be refactored. And some of it was, you know, rather complicated. The stuff that tends to not compile is usually, you know, templates, const expert, expansions, like all of that kind of stuff. Those are usually the problem areas that need fixing. So to avoid this problem then, what can we do? Because the other thing is not everyone is gonna have a Linux computer sitting around. They will then have to, you know, pull their code onto test. I mean, even if you do, that's a, that's a little bit of a nightmare. But also I wanna stress the fact that like, you know, half the team is volunteers. 
Half of the people working on Hazel are there on a volunteer basis. They are not getting paid to work on Hazel. So because of that, one of my goals obviously is to make sure that working on Hazel does not really feel like a job to them because they have their own software development jobs with all of the kind of corporate formal annoyances that come with that. So if I'm then making working on Hazel feel like real work, then that's that's just gonna drive them away. Working on Hazel should be an enjoyable experience. That's why, that's why the volunteers are there because they like doing it. So if I was to come in and make a mandate such as like you have to make sure that you test everything on every platform manually and you compile it and make sure it works before you commit. I mean, honestly, even I don't wanna do that. So the solution to making sure that Hazel does continue to build successfully on Linux, and if it doesn't, you know, whoever, whoever pushed code that does not compile on Linux, they can then go in and fix that and they can see what went wrong, they can see the error messages, they can, they can deal with that. We obviously need to expand this automatic Windows continuous integration, you know, compiling every commit and all configurations. We need to expand that system onto Linux. Now, interestingly enough, this computer, this computer that is running the Windows CI, it's right here in the office. You know, we talked about it in the previous devlogs. That computer actually also has Linux on it. it it's a it's dual booting to Windows 11 and Ubuntu 22, I think. And in fact, I used that computer with Ubuntu to get like, you know, Walnut chat compiling on Linux, the server. I'll have a video linked up there. But the problem is that like, you know, when it was just used for manual testing, that's fine. You can boot up Windows, do your testing there, boot up Linux, do your testing there. But now that it is like a permanent continuous integration machine that's running like the GitHub self-hosted runner so it can run the GitHub actions. It obviously needs to stay booted up in Windows so that it can continue running that continuous integration without, you know, being offline. So then ideally what we would do is we would build another computer that's just going to be the persistent Linux, you know, PC in the office. And then that could run the GitHub self-hosted runner and build Hazel on Linux. And then in the future, when we expand this to not just build, but also run tests, you know, actually run the Hazel engine and make sure it passes all the tests. We've got like a huge list of unit like tests as well as visual tests that will actually try and render things and make sure they render correctly. That's coming in the future. So that's why we would ultimately want to have something actually set up in the office. But the reason why I didn't want to do that right now uh, is because of a couple of reasons. First of all, our automated testing is not quite complete. You know, we're not doing it for Windows at the moment even. That's something that we've got planned for early next year. But then also the other reason is because I'm actually in the process of moving offices because my family and I, well, my wife and child, we're moving about an hour away from where we currently live. We're moving to like the outskirts of the city where it's like nice and pretty. Honestly, I'm just super sick of the city. And so what I've been doing is I've been like basically building an office. I've been renovating an existing like building that we have on that property. And it's gonna become like the new Studio Cherno office. And so I don't wanna build any more computers you know, here, I wanna move in there. And then once we're there, we can have a more serious setup. But I still want to make sure that Hazel builds properly on Linux, especially for this 2023.2 release. So what do I do exactly? Well, I thought that like maybe I could use the runners that GitHub offers, so like the GitHub hosted runners, which include storage and minutes, you know, I mean, you only get 500 meg and 2000 minutes per month, which just taking a look at their pricing calculator here, if we do five jobs a day, 20 minutes each job, which I would say is a conservative estimate, then that's 24 dollars per month, which is not terrible. However, what I don't like is that this is all metered based on minutes. And then there's also the question of storage. And then what if I want other branches to also be built? That's gonna use more, more minutes. So I don't know, whilst I don't think that's necessarily a bad solution for now, I did have the idea of, well, why not just set up a VPS? Why not just have a VPS run your Linux continuous integration? Because that, you know, that just gives you full root access. You can do whatever you want there and it's gonna be much cheaper. If we take a look at hosting as VPS plans, which you guys know I've been using Hostinger for quite a while now and they're always really nice and generous with hooking me up with whatever VPS I need. They've been a fantastic partner for Hazel and for this channel and they are sponsoring this video as well. So if we take a look at some of their offerings, I mean, this is, $8 a month. And in fact, it's even cheaper if you use coupon code Cherno, but we'll get into that later. You know, you get a hundred gig of NVMe disk space, which might I add is super fast and obviously full root access. And the thing is, this is not 
metered based on minutes. This is not, you know, you have your 100 gig. If you need more, like you can always scale up, by the way. It's super easy to scale up your plan or scale down your plan if, if this is fine for you. This is also two cores, by the way, the GitHub one, which this is two cores. You want four, you can get four, not much. In fact, if we go up to like their most expensive one, it's $22 a month, which is still cheaper than GitHub at 400 gigabytes of disk space and eight cores, which is four times the cores that GitHub gives you. These are different products and I'm not necessarily saying you should go for this 100%, but to me, this kind of seems just better. I would prefer to do this. So that's exactly what I did. If we go back up here to like the latest commit or the latest workflow run, for example, you can see we now have a build Windows and we have a build Linux. And we can look at that build Linux. And uh, obviously, you know, we can look at all of the logs. Here's the actual build log. You can see first it's going to run setup, which runs pre-make to generate the make files. And then it's just going to run make to actually build the code. So if you want to set this up yourself, uh, you know, just go to hosting.com slash cherno. I'll have the link in the description below, of course. Pick a plan such as this one. Uh, and then when you are checking out, just don't forget to use coupon code cherno because that will give you an additional discount as you can see. This exact plan, by the way, is about to be cheaper as well because hosting uh, have a Black Friday sale starting on October 30 and ending on December 3rd. So if you've been thinking about this, then the best time to get this is going to be right now. And then once you've done that, you can just set up the VPS. It's quite simple. You can just pick your operating system, pick your region, choose your root password, stuff like that. And then you'll see this hosting a dashboard, which is lovely, very easy to use. Here's the IP address. From here, you can just SSH into the server. Uh, and then here we are. Now from here, it's just a matter of, you know, making sure that you have everything properly installed here, like Git and Clang and all of the dependencies that you might need for your specific project. So that is now up and running. Every single commit that goes into dev and master, although if you look at our branch structure, you can see that master is, is our release branch. So really like two or so commits per year will, will go into that branch. Dev, on the other hand, which is, as you can see, is where everything gets merged into, all of those commits will now get built on Windows and Linux. So we immediately are made aware of any problems that we might have with building on all of the platforms that Hazel supports in all of the configurations that Hazel supports. Now you can see here that there's no dist configuration. The reason for that is we haven't quite made dist work properly on Linux just yet. Dist is also a little bit of a unique configuration. So for example, the editor doesn't actually build or run in dist. Dist is a special configuration that we use to actually ship the final product of a Hazel project. So like, you know, to ship the game. Because of that, it actually doesn't include a fair few things. So for example, it doesn't include the shader compiler which means you can't build shaders. And also just off the top of my head, it doesn't include Asimp. Asimp is a 3D model library that we use to import 3D models from a wide variety of formats, such as GLTF and FBX. That doesn't exist in the disk configuration. That library is simply not there. It's not linked, it's not included, it's not there. Because Hazel's runtime uses Hazel's own 3D model format. It doesn't use Asimp to import like a GLTF file that you might use during development. When you import it into the editor, it will use Hazel's own 3D model format, which is much more optimized for the runtime. And compiling shaders and importing 3D models, obviously things that you would want to do during the development of the game. So hence they're needed by Hazel's editor. So that's why dist isn't here. It's because it's a bit of a special configuration and we still need to work through that. So then let's take a look at the workflow file. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about the changes I've made. Again, I do go in depth into this in a different video, which I'll have linked up there. So if you're interested in how I put the Windows version of this together in the first place, check out that video. So really the only difference here is that I've expanded that there used to be just one job called build. Now there's build Windows, which continues to run on Windows and self-hosted. But then there's also a build Linux. And what that does, you can see it runs on Linux and self-hosted. So I've added an additional self-hosted runner, which runs on that hosting of VPS. And we'll talk about that in a minute here as well. So there's debug and release, build configurations. We have the exact same checkout action, the exact same Python being set up as well. We're not actually using Python here, but we will in the future. And then you can see, I'm just making sure that we set some environment variables. Namely, the only thing there is the Vulkan SDK path because that's that's gonna be local specific to that machine. And then we just run pre-make, you know, with Clang to generate the make files. And then we just run make. And that is it. It's really quite simple at the moment, but it does the job. I didn't technically start with this. Instead, the first thing I did 
was I hopped onto that VPS and I just cloned Hazel from Git myself and I made sure that it built. It definitely wouldn't be a good idea to just use GitHub Actions and keep committing stuff or keep rerunning tasks so that it, it does this. Much easier to just SSH into the server and do everything there. One of the reasons why, again, I like this solution more than using GitHub hosted runners. Now creating the self-hosted runner, again, really easy. You just switch from Windows to Linux here and then you just run all of this and that's it. And then I just set it up to run as a service again. And it was super easy to set up just as long as your workflow file specifies that it should run on Linux. And obviously that self-hosted runner is tagged with Linux. This will just run magically. I have to say this whole GitHub Actions uh, system is really, really, really good. It just works really well. And I haven't had many issues. In fact, I had less issues with Linux because I didn't have to do anything like run it as root or whatever. In Windows, I had to do a little bit of uh, user playing around with users that were allowed to run that GitHub self-hosted runner. But with Linux, it literally just worked, which was fantastic. Now I will say whilst you are building this, making sure that it works, potentially editing C++ files, I, I wouldn't just be using the terminal here. Instead, I'd be using Visual Studio Code. There's this extension, if you type in SSH, called Remote SSH by Microsoft. I do not know how I did not know that this was a thing. Like this is the most, this, is just, this should just come with Visual Studio Code. It's so good. All you have to do is add a new SSH host, add your VPS, you know, and then you just connect to it. And then you literally just get like a normal Visual Studio Code style workspace, but like on that remote server. So you can see that here, I've just opened it up to my actions runner directory, which contains that GitHub self hosted runner that I downloaded. Like here's the run script, you know, that you would call under work is where it's actually checked out Hazel. So this is the checkout of Hazel that is going to be doing all of the, the running on and executing my GitHub workflow on. You can hit control P and open like, I don't know, renderer.cvp like as if it was just all local control shift F works if you want to like find something and of course if you just need a normal terminal you just open up a new terminal you can have as many as you want and like this is just a normal terminal as if you were you know SSH'd in and just using the terminal app so this of course is great if you're trying to you know make sure that that we're inside say this directory which by the way you can just copy the path and there we go you know if I'm trying to continually like make stuff and make sure that it's actually building correctly and it's compiling, tweaking the code, you know, fixing it or being inside premake and just making sure that the build scripts work for Linux in this case. Doing that from within Visual Studio Code is just <laughs> so much better. And in my opinion, this is one of those things that actually makes this quite viable because otherwise like dealing with a remote server for, you know, more complicated things like game engines might have been a little bit awkward, a little bit hard. But if you've got a workspace such as this, it's just so much better. So yeah, I'm sure you all know about this and I'm just the stupid one here, but I just wanted to share this because it's it's just amazing and it made my week so much better. All right, I think that's pretty much it. That pretty much summarizes my journey to getting Linux CI for Hazel. So I'm really happy that we now have Windows and Linux across like all the configurations, every single commit into dev finally being actually built and any errors reported. It's definitely advisable to just have this set up from the beginning. I can't say that it was particularly difficult to set it up at this stage. You can set it up at, at any stage. As long as your actual you know engine builds, then it's not that difficult to just set up a GitHub workflow file uh, and make sure that you're running through this. And again, the next major step is going to be running this, testing this, because that's going to be critical to do across a wide variety of actual hardware, so just different GPUs, as well as obviously Linux and Windows, making sure that features work the same way and we don't have weird platform specific bugs. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And finally, don't forget to check out Hosting as Black Friday sale while it's still on. Hosting.com slash churno is the link along with coupon code churno. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.